Alternative Radio. On this episode, Missy and I are talking about the power of words. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. This is the podcast where Missy and I talk about the everyday practical steps that we can take to maintain our inner peace and happiness, regardless of uh, what's going on in life and whether life seems to be going well or not going well, we can still maintain that inner peace regardless. So... How are things going? I, I see you're inside. Does that mean it's way too warm, Missy? Yeah, it's a little humid out there today, and I'm in the back of the office, so uh, I'm definitely, you know, trying to keep my hair nice and smooth. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, it's been gorgeous. I mean, for Florida weather, it's actually been mild, um, and this is probably the first level of humidity we've experienced. And it's just the middle of May. Usually, we are experiencing this in like April and March. So uh, super happy. And I see you're outside. Basically, um, it's a little windy today. Um, but our, our weather here in my portion of Maryland has really been strange. Uh, it, it's been colder and wetter than yeah. typical. I mean, it's only been the last few days that I've been able to meander outside just to sit and work and um even today i mean it's, it's getting on the warmer side but there's a pretty heavy breeze again so i don't know the, the weather is changing around here yeah it's well, that might be a good thing maybe we're taking the words that everybody's you know, bringing we're bringing global warming <laughs> down just by the power of our words <laughs> <laughs> hey i you know if, if temperatures stayed on the cooler side i am more than happy i i am not a heat lover and uh as much as I do like this area of the country, um, I'd rather be in cold snow land most of the year. Yeah, I like the change of season. Now, I will admit that. Like, I like the change of season, and I do like just that spring, fall, you know, and there's really not much of that here. I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. It's usually hot pretty seven to eight months out of the year. Um, yeah. And then for four months, it's like, you know, it's that spring, spring weather. And then we have like three days of cold. <laughs> so, so, um, I do miss that from Maryland, but, um, but it's been really nice this year. I'll, I'll be the first to admit like, you know, going out, being outside walking early in the morning is not miserable. It's not so hot that you can't, you know, breathe. So that's mm -hmm. definitely good. That's good. Yeah. No, I, I remember many decades ago when I lived in Florida and, uh, it was just weird not to have change of season, yeah. but for the locals and, and I was teaching high school, my uh, high school students, I was teaching 11th graders would come in in like February and wearing winter coats. And it was in the sixties and to them that warranted winter coats and, you know, sixties, I still had the AC going and uh, you know, I mean, I, I grew up up North, so I'm like sixties that this, this is awesome, you know. <laughs> That's an acclimation. That'll do it. You get acclimated you know, after a couple of years, you're like, oh, 60 degrees, ew. That's cold. It, it's all about perspective. You know, it, it's, I, I wanted the AC on in the classroom. They wanted the heat. And, uh, of course, I won. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> and that's why they brought their cuts to school, Chris. <laughs> But it was also strange though, for people who were born and raised down there to never have seen snow, mm -hmm. which I just kind of take for granted. That's, you know, an experience. Uh, but, you know, since then I had to change my worldview that, you know, not everybody experiences everything. And um, in the autumn, I had uh, leaves from uh, Massachusetts mailed to me to show the kids autumn leaves. 
And uh, because many of them, you know, who were native uh, never saw, you know, an autumn leaf except for in pictures or videos, but to actually see it and hold it. And um, so again, it it, it was a great perspective shift to to watch these 11th graders ooh and ah over leaves. and, And I'm thinking, well, you know, I've seen that my entire life. like what do we take for granted right and that kind of leads into what we're talking about today is like Mm -hmm. language every single day to create what's going on you know like oh god i'm so busy and then next thing you know like you get busier and busier because you're saying constantly that you're so busy or um you know things things of that nature i have very many um friends and relatives or people that i've come across i should say that have uh, you know, uh, maybe a lower self-esteem where they don't believe in themselves and they're, they don't feel like they're smart enough and, and they profess that, you know, they mm-hmm. just say things like that. And, and then they bring in those experiences where they're making mistakes and they, they lose self-worth over, over those experiences to prove to themselves that, that that's what they are. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure that most people have heard of through many means of, uh, spiritual teachers or, or transformational teachers, uh, the reticular activating system, that's the part in your brain that just wants to be right. It's looking for things, mm-hmm. whatever questions you have, it wants to answer. So if you say, why am I so stupid? Then it's looking for all those mistakes. But if you say, you know, how can I, how can I fulfill more lives? How can I be a servant uh, to, to my community? You know, then you're always looking for ways to do things like that. Exactly. Um... You know, it, it's interesting whenever I reflect on this notion of, of the power of words and definitely do understand, you know, that, that words are very powerful. Um, but it's interesting how it, as younger people, when we would look at ourselves and, you know, and, and I'm talking like, you know, kids, you know, and, and think to yourself, well, you know, I'm a superhero and, and I can fly and I've, I've got, you know, there was a part of us, even as a kid, that, that knew we couldn't, you know, I mean, most of us didn't try to jump off a cliff and say, look, I can fly because I'm a superhero. You know, we, we just didn't internally believe that. <laughs> okay. Except for you. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, you survived, obviously. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's interesting, though, how as we age and we say we're getting more wisdom, we start to though believe these thoughts that we're having, you know, so even as kids, maybe with your exception, Missy, um, you know, we can say we're a superhero and not a hundred percent believe it, but yet as an adult, I can say that um, I'm stupid or I'm nothing or I'm worthless. And I don't question the veracity of that. Mm. You know, I, I just take that as face value and and figure, yeah, that that is true. I, I am all of those things, and I don't know what that switch is. You know, what, why why do we just take that as proof when, as a child, we knew enough to try? I mean, I, I guess you jumping off or whatever, you were trying, <laughs> so at least you're you're verifying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, as adults, it, it seems that many of us don't even try to verify. If it, it's if that thought pops in our head, then we just take it as reality and don't seem to try to do anything different with it. Well, I think that two things come to my mind uh, to share is, is domestication, right? You know, um, and, and I guess they're, they're probably one of the same, right? Domestication and learned behavior, right? So yep. don't know that they don't know. And we blame them for a lot of the, the quote unquote issues that we have as adults, but they don't know. They know what they were taught and they know what they were taught before that. And, you know, and that's part of domestication. It's like, you know, when a kid's trying to climb, like well, my youngest son was such a climber. Right. And mm-hmm. he would, I would walk into his room and he'd be sitting on top of his dresser or, you know, I'm trying to get something out of the closet. And, and instead of being like, no, I'd be like, okay, like, how can I teach him to do this a little bit more safely? <laughs> right. Because I was worried. He wasn't worried. He had no fear, you know? And mm-hmm. so, fear is something that we instill, right? And, and so it, so are those kind of thought processes. It's like, you know, 
um, that I had dealing growing up. I, I believed I wasn't enough. Now, my parents were wonderful. I had amazing parents and I watched the behavior of my parents and, and I could see that not enoughness. I could see that, well, you know, I don't want to try too hard. I don't want to get and escape that box because what if I fail? Right. You know, and what right. and wouldn't make me good enough because if I'm not successful, then I'm not good enough. And now I'm just like, you know what? I, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. I'm going to try, even if I fail. I mean, I'm, I call myself a serial entrepreneur because I've started <laughs> so many businesses. Now, all of my businesses have flourished and I've transitioned into a different business or I've transitioned mm -hmm. into a different line of work, but does either way I made fit, I made mistakes along the way. I didn't fail because I kept going after that, you know? Yep. And, um, and, and that's just another belief. Like, you know, so even though I, 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 I used to be into affirmations hugely all the, I mean, like I really had to work hard to change those beliefs and it felt so foreign. Like I was faking myself. Right. right. And then all of a sudden it was like, wow, I started to believe it. I started to stand taller. I started to be more out there and I'm, I, would, I consider myself a very introverted person. Um, but now people are like, oh, you're so friendly. You're so kind. You're so, you know, I'm like, I, I don't do it to get accolades. I do it because I want to share the love that I know ha I have. And right. if, even if people don't want to accept it, that's okay. That's okay. Because I feel like I, you know, I enjoy the love. I enjoy the giving and receiving at the same time. So yeah, it's, it's taken, it's, it's sometimes it takes time and, and you get to be patient with that. Mm -hmm. So it, it almost seems to be a full circle in, in the sense when, when you're talking about the domestication, you know, or I would call it learned behavior, yeah. probably same things. But, you know, that then as a kid, we learn to maybe temper some of that out of safety, social norms, whatever. But then it seems that we can reach another either age or pinnacle in life or, or wisdom when, you know, we start to maybe revert back and, and start to say that, you know, maybe there's a difference out there. Maybe there's a shift in perspective out there. Maybe there's something else I can look at. Um, and maybe we go back to some of those childhood ideas that just because I think it, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's true, you know, type ideal. Yeah. Well, we, you know, I think as, as humans, we tend to, we, we dive into what's in our surroundings. Like we want to be the same as everybody else. And I'm not saying that we don't want to be different. We have some people that want to be different, but when it comes down to the essence of who we are, we are already all the same. You know, just because you have a different perspective or a different look <clears> on <throat> male or whatever doesn't mean that you're different than me. You're the same as me. And and if I can recognize that in every person, then I'm going to see that light and I'm going to want to find that light for myself. You know, like and and it really does. It all starts with self-talk. It, it starts with speaking things into existence and that belief that you hold if you if you believe that you know, you're going to be a millionaire one day, then you have that all in you. It doesn't mean you're mm -hmm. doing things and, um, and constantly, you know, trying to play the lottery or, you know, like you just have that belief and you just know it to be true. And you're just going to let the universe take care of the rest. And yep. that's what makes it so easy when you believe that that's possible and you see that it starts to take place in your life, life, even if it's just like a, a cup of coffee, right. You know, so you know, and a lot of people will refer to this as the law of attraction, you know, but, and, and, and I believe that too, but I think that there are so many other laws at, in effect. It's the law of mentalism. It's the law of cause and effect, you know, um, and, and there's many other universal laws, but mm -hmm. if you start to look at those kind of things and really can just shift a little bit at a time and be patient, then, then things will just turn around. Yeah. And, and there does come, I, I think, the factor that, you know, we, we can believe in our self-talk and we can use those um, affirmations, but they only work when we 100% believe in them. And I think that's where a number of people, 
I hate this phrase, but I'll say it, go wrong with it. You know, when they say the affirmations aren't working, one, you're probably not doing it consistently and long enough, um, you know, because that is a, a behavioral change. So, you know, if, if every day you're going to tell yourself that, you know, you, you're smart and you're, you're worth it and whatever you're saying, you've got to do that every day for at least a month or more and, and really believe it um, or else it won't work. But I think that that's part of the thing that, you know, when we say, you know, like, like, you know, you're saying, you know, well, well, you know, just believe in whatever in yourself and you can make that true. Um, you know, I, I know there's a number of people who will say, oh, that's just fanciful stuff, you know, it, it, yeah. but it is if you don't 100 percent believe it. And that's where I think we falter. Um, you know, there, there's a thing in uh, Christian scripture that, you know, Jesus says, you know, you, you can move a mountain if, if you had faith. You know, so how many people moved a mountain because they, you know, said, hey, I want to move this mountain. And I've tried <laughs> that one. I have tried when I've been out in Colorado. I'm like, hey, let me try this scripture thing. I'm going to move that Rocky Mountain over. <laughs> it didn't shift. But, you know, in, in reality, though, what one of the reasons why I would say it didn't shift is because I honestly 100 percent did not believe I could do that. And you wonder what would happen if I honestly 100% believe that that was possible. But I knew that there was a part of me that was saying that it's just never going to happen. So it didn't. I like. To so say, how is that true for ourselves? I, I like to say you might not be able to move that mountain immediately, but you can move it one dirt pile. Right? That is and, true. And so, so that's what we're here. We're here in a in time-space continuum. And where everything on a spiritual plane might be happening instantly for us, we are experiencing time. So we think it takes time. And they have a um, something called a holy instant, which a lot of people might refer to as a, an epiphany, right? Because mm. you can be in the midst of a conversation and then all of a sudden you're like, oh God, I get it. It clicked, right? <laughs> and oh, I just caught myself getting ready to call myself old. Oh, I didn't want to do that. And I'm like, I'm... I'm very uh, knowledgeable and educated and experienced, you know, and that makes me feel so much better, right, than saying old or um, something of, of the effect, you know, women, we, you know, we have lots of concern with our weight and our bodies. And there's a lot of self-talk when it comes to bodies um, and images. And I'm, I'm sure it's true for male too, but I'm not a male. And like that can just shift just a little bit. Like, you know, you stop comparing yourself to others, then you stop worrying yep. about whether you're skinny enough or you have dimples or you have stretch marks or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you just start to accept yourself and love yourself for who you are, knowing that you can speak those things into existence. Like, I mean, I literally went from one, I'm, I'm a very healthy 145, I, I would say majority of the time. And I got down to, I mean, just from the power of my words and where I was, I wasn't eating any different. I wasn't really, I mean, I was exercising, but nothing like extraneous. Mm -hmm. And I probably got myself down to about 130. And I look back on those pictures and I'm like, well, first of all, yeah, I felt like I looked pretty good. But second of all, I think to myself, my mind did that. My mind did that. And now where I'm at, I'm still at that healthy weight. And if I didn't feel guilty about eating uh, ice cream or, or have, have that kind of shame, you know, or resentment for myself for, for giving into those things, then I might still, you know, be that weight. And there's nothing wrong with me now. I'm perfectly healthy and perfectly whole, just like I am, but I enjoy ice cream, <laughs> you know? So, mm -hmm. and, and it really does. I mean, that just words are, they're not just spoken out loud. They're in, in your mind. You know, so oh, yeah. thoughts are, are just the same power of the words. You know, it's all energy. And, and I think we have to remember that our thoughts are our creation. Mm. You know, so when we say things, you know, say negatively about our body, that's our thought, yeah. which means it may not be true. And which also means then I can change that thought. So just like what you're saying, just by that power of thought, we can make things happen. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing that if, if I'm telling myself I'm not worthwhile, 
um, I can stop saying those words. Yeah. You know, because, and, and again, that goes back to just because I'm saying it or thinking it doesn't mean it's true. Right. You know, and, and to really look for, you know, well, what is maybe some truth in that? And, and that's where, you know, it might be good to consult with a, a good friend or a family member or whomever, you know, to check our thoughts. So if, if I'm feeling all these negative thoughts, maybe I should go to somebody and say, so what do you think? Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I'm worthless as a person, you know, and, and see what a trusted friend or family member has to respond to that, you know, because in most cases they're, they're going to temper that um, or depending what it is, you know, maybe it's like, you know, Hey, I, you know, I, I don't like my body and, you know, maybe somebody could say, well, look, you know, I mean, you're beautiful as you are, but sure, you could be healthier, you know? So do we want to work on maybe being a bit healthier? Right. Well, I mean, and it's all habit, right? These, these are habits and, and we take our past experiences and we bring them <clears> into <throat> the future. And that's why we keep repeating these cycles because that's the law of rhythm. But if mm -hmm. you can interrupt that pattern, you can interrupt that thought process, you know, however you can do it, it's, I hate to say how, right? But because sometimes it's just being aware, just that awareness mm. will let you interrupt it, you know, right when you're getting ready to open your mouth and you feel that inner calling to go, don't say that, don't, don't open your mouth and say that. And you say it anyway, that's, that's what it's doing. It's, it's telling you that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, that's not the way that your inner, inner spirit feels about you. So that's why you feel so disconnected. That's why you feel negative about it. And um, if you can start to be aware of things like that, then you can very easily break that habit. Um, again, patience, time, but, mm -hmm. but you can, you can do it. And that's, that's definitely another belief. You can do it. Yeah. And, and we, we need to, again, believe that, <laughs> you know, um, not half-heartedly, but believe that, that, we can change. Um, and that really, I think goes back to my time working with people with addictions. Um, because there you, you see a dramatic change in, in the people who get recovery, maintain a recovery, and you can see a change in them, not just physically, but also their mental processes, their emotional responses, <clears throat> um, maybe even a level of maturity. And that happens within a month, two months. And, and I've seen it in thousands of people. And that's all it takes, you know, make these changes for a couple months and they're going to become a part of you. So amazing that you just said that. Because someone very close to me was doing it for about two and a half months, I believe, close to that. But She's been out of recovery. And I think for the first time in her life, you know, she's got her own everything. She's got her own car, mm -hmm. her own place to live. She's got her own job. She's supporting herself. And I can see the shift, right? I can see the shift. And those two most important words and whatever follows, right? I am, that's still a shift she's working to make, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I am in her presence and I do hear, I am so sick or I am not feeling well or I am whatever. I'm like, okay, words are powerful. Words are powerful. And that's all I say. It's just that, oh gosh, you yeah, know what? Words are powerful. You're right. And she loves me, thankfully, that she is willing to um, have that openness for feedback. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't just go stepping up to anybody that I don't know. And no. like, hey, oh, by the way, your words are powerful. Don't say that. Um, but um yeah. So, I mean, it's just really whatever you say following I am is, is just really what your true belief is. And uh, mm -hmm. so pay attention to those words and whatever follows. Yeah. No, and, and I think that that's so important, you know, and probably something that is um, so simple that, you know, we, we can all do it on, on a daily basis, multiple times, just keep, you know, reminding ourselves throughout the day, I am dot, dot, dot. Um, and, you know, just encourage self and others, you know, but really encourage self because in my belief, when our thoughts 
are in line with our beliefs and our actions, that's when we find our inner peace. Yeah. And, and if you don't know where to start, uh, there was a, it's a book, I believe it's called 15 Laws of, of uh, Powerful Growth or, or something of that nature. I can't remember who wrote it, but it was a book that I read a long time ago. And one of the things that were in the book was make a list of a hundred words of the things mm -hmm. that you are. And I'm gonna tell you, like, you would think that it might just be sitting down and being easy. It took me a year and a half to build that list. And now my list is like, you know, a 200, right? Of these words mm -hmm. that I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wait, I'm that. And I still add to it. But whenever I'm feeling down or I'm feeling defeated, I will go look at that list and be like, oh, that's right. I forgot I was that. I forgot I was that. And inevitably it raises my vibration and it makes me feel better mm -hmm. to remember those things. Cause sometimes we do forget. We, we fall asleep if you will. And, and uh, there's one, um, one teacher, Abraham Hicks, she always says, you know, we all fall asleep. And so if you're, if you're going to fall asleep, just pretend that you're a nice little baby. You wouldn't go up to that baby and go, wake up, you stupid baby. You'd be like, <laughs> hey, little baby, time to wake up and be gentle with yourself as you're coming back yep. in remembrance. Yeah. And, and that's uh, always key is, is be gentle with yourself. You know, I, I don't know how many times with my clients, I, I'm repeating those words. It's, you know, because they, they'll be way gentle with others until it comes to self. I think it's true for many of us. I mean, I'll, I'll do the same thing. But um, yeah, I, I think that's really a big key. Be gentle with yourself. Be patient with yourself. Yeah. yeah and, and, you know, for me, I always know when I'm being impatient or I'm being judgmental that I'm coming from the ego and not from the spirit side. And so that's extremely powerful as well for me to to recognize and then I have this little saying, and I, I think I've shared it before, um, and I'll try not to curse. <laughs> anyway, so when that thought comes into my head that is not friendly, not uh, welcoming, then I usually say, thank you for caring, and F you for sharing. Because that's what, and then I, and then it makes me go like, that makes me laugh, to be honest with you. And it breaks yeah. that concentration of thought. And so I've interrupted it now, and then I go like, oh, okay, that's right, haha. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure where that thought came from, but thanks for letting me know that it's still in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care about that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold on to that anymore. Um, right. So it's it's just helpful. And and really, it's like you've ever seen that that little cartoon when you were little. You know, my um, my F George, and I'm gonna love him and hug him and. Uh, him yes. Him, right. Yeah. Great cartoon. That's what we do with those negative thoughts. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. they're like my precious, right? And I have to have them and. And I don't want anybody to know that they're mine. But if you just let it go, it dissipates. It disappears. It's gone. Yep. And, and there's nothing that you need protected from at that point. Right? It's you're protecting yourself from the nothingness that you're holding on to. But mm -hmm. as you let go of the nothingness, it's like, wow, I have everything. This is great. You know, so it's a, it's a huge, uh, huge change. Yes. And, and that, that was a really good example um because yeah we, we have to begin to let go of, of the these thoughts um because you know they are our thoughts so you know i think it, it's important that we start to change uh you know the those thoughts that we're having Absolutely. Oh, it's really good today i think chris and it was good getting to know a little bit about you in the beginning with all that heat i didn't know you were from up north yes yes i i Grew up uh, in Buffalo, New York, and um, yeah, we were used to snow back in the many decades ago when it still snowed. And um, yeah, feet and feet of snow is is what we trudged to get to the bus stop and to school. I didn't know what a snow day was. Oh, I mean, uphill both ways. I hear it in the snow, barefoot, right? <laughs> I, w I was going to go there, but, you know, then I was going to feel old and I was going to tell myself I'm old and then I'll feel, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm using all that with the words. I'll help you out. <laughs> but to, to put myself as old, it was in the 70s. So we are talking old. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And hopefully this helped you today. And, you know, just remember, to keep aware of the things that are going through your mind and that are coming out of your mouth. Yep. Thank you, everyone. And if you uh, like this content, please like it, share it with your friends. 
and let us know if there's any topics that you want to hear from us. Thanks so much.